Welcome to the Tony Gaskin Show, best-selling author, celebrity life coach, and international speaker. The purpose of this show is to bring you motivation, inspiration, and education in the areas of life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me. Talks with Tony, you know, still getting some great questions in, and I kind of, you know, just like to read them on the fly instead of getting them all packaged and pretty, um, just so you know that this is very real. If you have any questions that you would like me to, you know, mention on air, shine some light on, just me kind of talking to you about it and talking through it may help you come closer to your decision. You can send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com, inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Got one here. Hi, Tony. I'm so broken, so lost, so heartbroken beyond words. This man has broken me in every sense of the word. I have lost everything, my time, my love, my family, my everything is gone. I do not even know how I will live my life raising my kids alone. Now, this is a message that I've been receiving quite often where women are just feeling so down and completely confused. And I want to speak to it because a lot of times what happens is we give our everything. We give our everything to a person who has no real interest in us. And so what I want you to remember is moving forward, when you love someone, you love them selflessly, but you have to always know that the highest level of love is self-love. So you can never love a person more than you love yourself. You can, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't love anyone more than you love yourself. The good book says, love your neighbor as yourself, not instead of yourself. So when you give to a person, you give them a little bit at a time. You don't just give them all of your love. You treat them with respect. You talk to them with respect, dignity, and you speak into their life. You are loving and caring, but in portions. So when you give to them, they should reciprocate. If you talk to them with respect, you're not yelling, you're not cursing, you're asking them about their day, you're sharing your side of things, and you're having great conversation, they should reciprocate that conversation. Then you all build, you get closer, then you become an item. Now you're a couple. Well, if you are making time to have phone conversations with them, if you are opening up about your life, your past, they should reciprocate. Then you go a little further, and now you are completely 100% exclusive. Now you should start to really ration out your love and your interaction so that you really see that they are genuinely interested in you. What happens is a lot of times we give everything because we're seeking their approval, and we're giving, 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 but we're not checking to make sure that they are reciprocating. So what happens is you could end up giving everything and they just get complacent in this state of taking from you. And they take from you and take from you. And because they don't reciprocate, but you don't speak up about it and say, hey, why don't you do for me as I do for you? You know, why don't you make time for me like I make time for you? Why don't you give me for nothing gifts or just a random card or I love you or thank you like I do for you. Because you don't call them on it, you don't check them on it, they say, you know what, okay, she's insecure. I can keep taking from her without giving back to her. And then they get complacent and they want to see how much you'll put up with. So the next thing you know, now here they are and they start to emotionally cheat. Leave the Facebook open and let you find it. That emotional cheating could eventually become physical cheating. So if you forgive the emotional cheating, you don't really check them on it, you don't leave them, then they know they can physically cheat. And the next thing you know, you've given everything in you to this person, trying to lead with love, trying to operate from love, trying to show them how much they mean to you. But 
you have nothing in return or very little in return. And then finally they get tired of taking from you because to them you have no backbone. So they lose respect for you and they want someone who will challenge them. They want someone who will hold them accountable. They want someone who will bring the best love out of them because that person truly loves themselves and they require and they demand a mutual respect. And so they'll leave you and you feel empty. You feel lost. You just feel so completely drained because you've given everything and they've taken everything from you. So I want you to think about this moving forward and I want you to be very mindful of it so that you can realize that it has to go both ways. Anything that you give, the love that you give, they may love you differently and you may have different love languages which requires a different type of love, but the effort and the energy and the attention needs to be equal or greater. And when the two of you kind of almost are competing to see who can love the other person the best, that's when it really works. You don't want it to be one-sided where one person is just taking, 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 and the other person is just giving, giving, giving. That's very, very draining. And at the same time, you shouldn't have to ask for everything to be done because you could be giving and you could be giving just off of a hint, you know, someone hinting that they need something from you and so you give it. But then you can hint, 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 wink, say hint, hint, and they still don't get it. And then you have to ask them, hey, can you make me a sandwich, you know, um, when you're hungry? You have to ask them to speak your love languages over and over and over instead of, instead of them just taking it upon themselves to know what to do. So think on that and pay close attention to it. And if you've already, like this young lady, you're in that place, what you have to realize is that you will heal if you desire to heal. And what you have to understand is that you made a lot of mistakes. You missed a lot of red flags. So get some good reading material. Read my book, Mrs. Right. Read Real Love. Read The New Guy Code. Find some other podcasts. Start feeding your mind, feeding your spirit with good things, whether you you're watching it on YouTube videos, you're listening to it on podcasts, reading the actual book or listening to the audio book. And what's going to happen is every new sentence, it's going to replace an old sentence that was in your mind. And these nuggets of wisdom will start to replace those old habits, old things you learned the wrong way. And now you'll start to see the error in your ways and it will start to boost your confidence because now you know moving forward, you're going to recognize this stuff a whole lot sooner. So keep that in mind. Pick yourself up. Keep pressing. Let me see. Hello, sir. Love your content. Helps me almost every day. Long story short, while my woman was pregnant, I received nude pictures from three different women. Literally, only for the few minutes of being horny ruined my life. After being caught, we did not have sex for another year, almost, and we would just argue to the point that we would say hurtful things for a reaction. And that's what happened. And she hit me a bunch, and I grabbed her and yelling for her to stop, but a lot of hurtful things were said during the bantering. Now we live separate and get along for the baby's sake, but she knows I want nothing to do, no, that I want to do anything to make myself a better partner for her because ultimately I want to marry this woman. She's the mother of my daughter of eight months. She's literally the best woman I know, but I don't know how to keep the faith when the world tells me to let it go. Help me, please. Whew, this is a tough one. And you know what? I believe I've said this before. And I want you to remember this, especially every man under the sound of my voice. An ounce of prevention weighs more than a pound of cure. 
An ounce of prevention weighs more than a pound of cure. So right now, to every man who is in a relationship, you're doing something wrong that could cost you that relationship. And it could be something so small that eventually will just continue to add up and add up and add up to where your woman is fed up. She's fed up. She's ready for something different. She's ready for something new. She's tired of your crap. And she becomes a woman scorned, and she's ready to leave. Women will put up with so much, but if you continue to just pile on those negative behaviors, eventually they get fed up, they find the strength to leave, and they leave. And when they leave, they may be gone forever. And if they come back, they may not be the same woman that you fell in love with the first time around or that you loved or that you had love for. Because when you truly fall in love with someone, you it is much, much, much harder to hurt them. So here's what you have to realize to the fellas in this situation. You may have lost her. You cannot force her to come back. You cannot beg her to come back. All you can do is express it. And then you can commit to a period of time that you're going to show it, whether that's a letter or a long text message or a handwritten letter or cards or flowers. If it's signing up for coaching or counseling or therapy and sending her the receipts, taking a picture with your life coach just to let her know that you're investing in yourself, it may take a smorgasbord of things that you have to do to get her back. You may have to just throw in a lot of stuff, but what she needs to see, if there's any chance, she needs to see that you're a different person, that you're taking the steps to become a better person. So if all you're doing is begging her to come back, that does nothing for her because it doesn't show her that you are a better person, that you're a different person. She doesn't see any of that. So what she's going to see is, so this is what I would do. If I lost my woman and I'm trying to get her back and we live separately, but yet we still kind of get along and, and we have a child together, what I would do is I would be in church every Sunday, you know, and I would be in there to get the word and to grow, and I would let her know, you know, send a picture. I would send a picture from church. Hey, just got out of church. It was amazing. The message today was on such and such. This week, would you mind reading a book with me? This is the book of the week. And I would go to Barnes & Noble's, get a book, take a picture of the book, send her the book, and then ask her to share notes. If she doesn't read the book, hey, see you didn't get to read the book, no problem. Here's my cliff notes you know, from, from what I read. And I realized so much through this book, The Error in My Ways. You know, you read the new guy code and you find something in there and you share with her, this is where I made a mistake. This is where I went wrong. So now you're showing her what you're doing. I would find a, a life coach. I would hire that coach. I would let her know what I'm sacrificing to pay for that. If it's $150 an hour, I'm going to pinch pennies, put things together, and I'm going to pay that $150 um, or try to get me a month package, and I'm signing up and I'm letting her know, hey, you know, I just paid $800 for a coaching package that will be two months long or three months long. My goal for this is to learn more about why I did the things I did and why I was the way I was and how I can move forward and be a better man. And I'll share it with her. Now, several things you share will just get an eye roll. It's going to get an eye roll. And it may take you three months, may take you six months, but you have to ask yourself, do you really want this woman? If the answer is yes, then you really, you really don't count the time. You don't keep up with the time. You just do the work. You do the work and you're not worrying about the time. You're not dating anyone else. You're not talking to anyone else. You're not entertaining anyone else. None of that. At the same time, behind the scenes, I would be working on me. So whatever you're struggling with, you know, if it's pornography, if it's masturbation, whatever you're struggling with, you have to pray for the strength 
to overcome those things, and then you have to force yourself. Because guess what? If you force yourself to stop entertaining those demons, those spirits that you're entertaining behind closed doors, I guarantee you, you won't get the shakes and pass out and, you know, start foaming from the mouth. You, you, you're you going to want to give in to those things. Now, you may get the shakes or whatever if you're trying to break a drug habit or which could be nicotine or alcohol. You may go through some things there, but if you're struggling there, then there's support groups, you know, NA, AA, um, there's support groups, there's nicotine patches. You have to do everything in your power. Join a men's group. I've just put out to start a men's group. We're starting a men's group. We're going to be talking about those real things that men struggle with um, on a monthly basis and sharing insight and wisdom with one another. And we're really going to go there and then meet up once a year for a men's conference and just different speakers building and presenting and just building one another up so that we can be better men and better husbands, better boyfriends, better brothers, better sons. And so you have to do the work. Do it on the inside. Don't just do it for show. Most men just do it for show. And they pretend like they're growing and they're changing. And then they get the woman back. She gives the man her heart. And then he breaks her heart again. And if you do that, there is a nice hot, 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 hot place in hell for you. I mean, it is so, I mean, it's a special corner just set aside for men like you that lie and deceive and manipulate consistently without learning your lesson. you blaming it on your father, blaming it on racism, blaming it on all of these things which could play a part in what makes you the way you are, blaming it on your genetics, your DNA makeup, what God did wrong when he created the man. But at the end of the day, you have to choose what type of man you're going to be. So you have the power to grow and to change. No matter who you were, no matter what you've done, you can change those things. So you have to show it. Because perception is reality. You can't just say, well, I'm going to do the work. I'm not sending pictures. I'm not sending updates. I'm not doing any of that. No, you got to show it. Perception is reality. You're going to get some eye rolls, but then she will start to believe it. And if you're consistent, one month is not going to be enough. Three months may not be enough. Depending on the woman, if it was my wife, it would have to be a year consistently. And she would have to see something every day, even if it just wasn't me sending it to her me posting something positive online, scripture of the day. I would have to do a scripture of the day, post it on Twitter every day. I would have to be, you know, Snapchatting from church. I would have to be going to the men's group, to the conferences. I would have to be sitting in Barnes and Nobles on Sunday with a book of the week every week. I mean, I would have to show all of that. I would have to be writing poems and letters. It would have to be random flowers showing up at the door once a week. I would have to literally be going broke trying to invest in myself to show her that I'm growing and that I'm changing, and I feel like it'll take me a good year, a good year, but you have to decide. And see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're not willing to go broke for it by buying books and paying for coaching sessions and going to seminars and taking online courses and all of those things, if you're not willing to go broke for it, you don't really love her. You don't really love her. You want her back out of ego. You want her back out of ego because you had a woman that would put up with your immaturity for a period of time, and then she got the strength to leave you, and now that sense of rejection is making you feel like less than a man. So to get her back will give you your sense of self-worth back because she is accepting you instead of rejecting you. And that's what most men want their woman back for, just for their ego. It has to be from your heart. You got to want her back out of your heart, not out of your ego. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. Got us a couple of questions in. Talk to you soon.